Hi everyone, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. Today we're going to be doing a composite video mode on my dad's ZX81. I believe this is our first ZX81 video on the channel. Is that right? Wow, that's crazy. Well, yeah, it must be. I don't remember doing one. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a learning experience for me. This is a ZX81 which belongs to my dad. He gave me it while I was home for Christmas because he wants to use it on a small flat screen TV using a composite video input and at the minute this is unmodified. As far as I'm aware it's working but yeah it is unmodified and we're going to fit a composite video mod board to it and learn a little bit about composite video in the process. First of all, we need to learn how to open the thing up. It's been that long since I've worked on one of these. Um, I can see that there are two screws here in the top and on the right, and I believe under at least some of the feet here, underneath the glue and the tape, we can find some more screws. So on this particular machine, I found one in the bottom left and one in the top left. Let's have a closer look at how I accessed it. Hopefully they're not super glued on and you can just lift it off like this. I tend to use double-sided sticky tape when I put the feet on these things. There is normally a screw in the bottom right as well, but on this machine, there wasn't one there. This keyboard membrane is a bit brittle and it tore when I was taking it out. I wasn't super careful with it because I was planning to put a new one in anyway to give it a good long life. So we'll tidy up these scraps of keyboard ribbon and let's have a look at what we're faced with. Okay, it's an issue three by the look of it. Nice red PCB. It has a newer ULA, more on that later. And I don't really have much more to say. I'm not too familiar with what's normal or not on these boards. I can see that the Z80 has been replaced. Look at all that flux there. That's a sign that it's had some work done in the past and normally would mean that it's good to go, but we are gonna find some problems with this machine. I also spotted this capacitor on the underside of the board. There is a place for it here on the silk screen, but it's right next to the heatsink and the voltage regulator. So I guess they started fitting them on the underside to stop them exceeding their maximum operating temperature. There's also a resistor here around the clock circuit. I'm not sure what it's doing and it's not important. So what about this modulator? Well, I'm putting a whole new board in place, which means I'm going to remove it, starting by desoldering these two inputs. One is five volts and one is the video input. And then we'll have to desolder the entire modulator case by removing the two ground pins. So let's take the lid off. I probably don't even need to do that, but it's just force of habit from composite modding so many spectrums. And let's remove these two wires. No, I still haven't invested in a desolder gun, but I'm very close to. So if you have any tips for desolder guns, let me know in the comments below because I am well and truly in the market now. I've done my time with this vacuum pump. I'm deliberately being careful with these wires not to cut them. I'm just going to fold them in like that and pop the lid back over the top because I'm going to keep this modulator as a spare because I know it works. Now these two ground pins are quite a pain to desolder. They're quite hefty and there's a lot of solder and there's a big massive ground plane on the other side of the board which we'll see. So what I'd like to do is apply some heat, melt the solder around the joint and with the board propped up on something I'll push down on the pins to make the modulator stand a bit proud of the board. I could then heat from the top side and lift each leg out individually and it was fairly pain free. And now you'll see the size of the ground plane on the underside, you'll understand why you might have been having some trouble with the heat dissipation. Anyway, it's come out very clean, there we are. I'm gonna keep that as a spare, you never know when it might come in handy. So let's clear these joints in preparation for fitting our new composite board. Cool, very clean, we're ready to go. So first I'm going to give you a quick overview of the board that I'll be fitting. Well, here it is. This is a composite video board specifically for ZX81, which is sold by ZX Renew. This board actually contains two different types of composite video mod, and you can choose these using the slider switches in the bottom right here. The first option is a fairly simple transistor based mod. The second option uses this IC and a little bit more complicated circuitry, a couple of pots here in the top right, which help to sculpt your video signal. And this is important if you have a particular kind of ULA 
more on that later. Uh, here's a question, look at the soldering of the port there on the top right. Is that a bit low on solder or is that normal? I don't know. I would normally try and fill the joint, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. Anyway, what else comes in the box? There's a little 3D printed plastic part here to separate the composite video board from the PCB. A couple of wires here and some header pins. Lovely. I think one option is to do this without removing the modulator and that's where those pins and those wires would come in a bit more useful. Um, but I've removed this modulator so I'm not going to need them. And I'm going to have to figure out which way around to put this separator piece. And it's pretty obvious when I come to do the soldering but it took me a little while from experimenting. It looks like the holes lined up the same regardless of which way I had it and I think this was my first idea, maybe it goes this way around, but when I popped the board on top I could see that the in and the 5 volts joints were blocked by the leg there and that's why it's been designed like this, so that bit goes in the bottom left and everything lines up nicely. And the next question is what am I going to use to solder the ground pins to the board? Well I know I said I didn't need them but I'm going to use those header pins which were provided. So I've put two in there coming up from underneath, I'm going to solder them in like this and then I'm going to melt the joints individually and wiggle it around until it looks nicely aligned. So now they're soldered in on the top side of the board, I'm going to make sure that they're sticking out perpendicular to it as closely as possible. It's not super critical because I'm going to cut the ends off but I think it's important to get them almost vertical so that the board is sitting square on the PCB. Yeah, close enough. Now let's solder the other side. I'm going to take this bit of plastic off the pin and I'm going to sit the leg on top of one of the feet that I've taken off the case just so that it's pushing the board flush to the PCB and then I'm going to solder it in place. Here we go. I noticed that the board is sitting a little bit off the PCB. I think that's unavoidable. That's just the way it's going to line up with the hole on the case, but let's try and get it straight at least. Now for the other side. I think that's as good as we're going to get it. So let's cut the pins and let's have a little go with it in the case and see how well it lines up. I'd say that's just about perfect. Now we need to fit our two little wires which are going to connect the video in and the 5 volt supply to the board. I'm using red for the 5 volt supply, that makes sense to me. I'm just cutting it down to size before we solder it in place. I think that's just about perfect. I just need to hold it in place while I flip the board over and solder the other side. Let's use a bit of blue tack for that. And we'll solder the top side in place. The plastic on the wire did melt a little bit but it's not going to be a problem, it's fairly rigid wire. I'm going to use blue for the video in signal and again I've cut it down to size and I'm going to hold it in place with some blue tack while I solder it up. and we'll finish the job here. The, the blue wire didn't melt. I don't know what the difference is, maybe the different colours have different properties. Anyway, here it is, looking good. That's a pretty neat job, I think, and I'm looking forward to testing it. So let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Top tip, stick your extension cables to the wall. A tidy desk is a happy desk. We're going to use the original power supply, which came with the ZX81. I happen to know that it's working, so no danger there. And here's our composite cable, I know it's red, it just happens to be the one I had lying around. And here's our image, I think it looks pretty good and it confirms the machine seems to be working. It's a little bit washed out, but that's okay. I want to mess around with it and the keyboard membranes bust, so let's rip this one out and pop a brand new one in place. Can't remember where I got this from, but it seems to be pretty good quality. Big massive sheet of 3M tape on the back that took me a while to get my nail under 
But here we go, I'm into it now. Look at all those lovely contacts. I must say that was much less painful than replacing a membrane on an issue to Spectrum. Thank you ZX81 for being kind to me. That's looking good. Can't tell it's a new one really, they're pretty convincing aren't they? Lovely, right, let's mess around with it. We'll plug in the new ribbons and I'm going to make a little program to put some text on the screen, fill the screen up and we can get a feel for how our video is looking. Well, it's good, but is it optimized? Have we got the most out of this board? We're going to have to go into a bit of detail and learn a little bit more about composite video signals to make sure we're getting the best we can. Let's start by looking at our ULA. This is a 2C210E ULA, which is a later ULA than the 2C184E. And there's a really important difference between these two ULAs. Let's take a look at the video feed signal, which would be going into our modulator. Here it is, it's a familiar shape if you've done this before, if you've tuned your issue to Spectrum for example. We're interested in the middle voltage level here, just to the right of the center line. This is called a back porch part of the signal, we'll learn about that shortly. The key thing here is that our ULA is producing a signal with a back porch. The older ULA won't produce this, it will just drop down and then right back up to the top. So this composite video board can inject a back porch into your signal, that's what the second mode does. In theory we don't need that, we just need to use the transistor based mod. But this is producing a fairly washed out image, at least it is on this screen. Not too happy with that, but when I flip it back to the mode which injects a back porch, I'm saying back porch too much, it's making me laugh, it looks a lot better, look at this on the top. So let's compare the two. Switch one down, switch two up is on the bottom, that's the the version of the mod which I think we should be using. And the back porch mod at the top is switch one up and switch two down. Having a very quick look under the scope, we can see that it's about an amplitude of one volt. Whereas on the bottom of the screen here, we can see the amplitude is nearer two volts or 2.2 volts. This matters along with other characteristics of the signal, as we can see here in our ideal luminance signal graph. Now what information can we take from this that we can look for in our signal? First of all, the front porch starts at zero volts. We have our line synchronization two microseconds later at minus 0.3. That lasts for four microseconds. Back to zero for four microseconds of back porch. That's setting our black level. And then it jumps up another 0.7 volts to the white level. So what can we actually manipulate here using our trimmers? Well, I can manipulate the level and the length of the back porch. That's useful to know. So we want that to be 0.3 volts or at least 0.3 volts higher than our line synchronization voltage level, which it does appear to be. So that's pretty good. Sadly, the line synchronization level seems to be stuck around 0.1 volts. But as long as we can get 0.3 volts above that for our black level, our back porch, then we should be looking fairly good. According to this, the back porch should last for four microseconds. Let's see if we can achieve that by tweaking the pot because if we count the cells here it looks like we're closer to five microseconds. So let's get back to this trimmer and see what we can do. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, it's not jumping straight up in a vertical line but as we'll see the end result is pretty good. I do notice that this has basically made the line synchronization pulse a bit too long, that should also be 4 microseconds and it's now 5, but we appear to be a little bit restricted in what we can do with this signal, so let's go with this for now. The final interesting property here is the voltage jump from the back porch to the white level should be 0.7 volts and counting the cells it appears to be at about 0.6 volts. So how does it look? I've written a program to draw a checkerboard and wow that looks fantastic doesn't it? Look at that contrast so white. Oh, and sorry if this messes with your eyes, but I did want to zoom in a bit so we can have a good close look at how crisp this is looking and how good the contrast is. So let's go on a journey into these pixels. Can we get any closer? I think we can. Let's have a go. I'm interested in how sharply it gets from white to black and there's a little bit of kind of so oh, too close. Sorry, hang on. Let's zoom out a little bit. This is a bit daft. 
All right, yeah, we can see that the blacks do bleed into the whites a little bit, but overall I'm pretty happy with that signal from a ZX81. I think this board is doing a pretty good job, even though we couldn't get the signal to be quite ideal. I'm very happy with it. And I'm sure that some of the properties of this image are due to the screen that I'm using and not just the composite board or the machine itself. Anyway, that's about it for this. You may have noticed that the Z80 was magically socketed halfway through the video. There will be a repair video soon. This board did develop a fault and I had to repair it, so keep an eye out for that coming soon. For now, let's get this machine back to me dad. Thanks everyone for watching and please like and subscribe.